Okay, we are on the very, <coughs> excuse me, the very last concept we need to learn, and that is a t-test. So far in this section, we've been doing a z-test. Why? What's the difference? That's the key here. How do we know when we're doing a z-test versus a t-test? A z-test is what we do when we're given sigma. Let me just pull in the sheet that I did from the last video. If you notice in this video, in the uh, original problem, they gave us sigma. When you're given sigma, that's a z-test. That's all there is to it. Sigma is the population standard deviation. So if they use words, you're looking for population standard deviation or the symbol sigma, that signifies z-test. Most of the time in the real world, we do not have that information. So we have to use the sample standard deviation given in this problem. Okay, so in this problem, we're told to use the t-test to test the claim about a population um, with a mean of mu at the given level of alpha using sample statistics. So we're given all this information. We're told that the claim um, is mu equals 51,300. We're given alpha 0 0.01, x bar is 52,243. S, the sample standard deviation is 1,400 and n equals 20. Please. Keep in mind, if they give you a word problem, you have to look at the words. They could say sample size 20. They could say from a sample of 20 people, we found the mean was 52,243 with standard deviation of 1,400. Because that sentence started with the word sample, that tells you that you're given an X bar and an S. Let me repeat that. If your problem starts out stating, or somewhere in the problem states, from a sample of 20 people, we found a mean of 52,243, and standard deviation of 1400 because that sentence started with the word sample that is an s not a sigma that's an x bar not a mu if it's coming from a sample it's an x bar for the mean and an s for the a standard deviation be careful because on this on the test they will not necessarily tell you use a t-test or a z-test you'll have to know were you given the standard deviation from a sample or a population if they give you the symbol Super easy, but if they give you the words, not so easy. Uh, you have to look for the word sample to signify t-test. In this problem, they give us s, which is clearly the symbol for a sample standard deviation, so we know we're going to do a t-test. From there, nothing about this problem is different other than we use the button for the t-test instead of z-test on the calculator. Everything else is exactly the same. So let's get started. We're going to start the hypothesis. I mean, the yes, yeah, say the hypothesis. We were told that the claim was mu equals 51,300. Equal sign always goes with the null. It's opposite or alternative is not equal. Okay, it's two-tailed because of the not equal sign. So we kind of written down everything we have so far. You'll notice on my paper over here, I wrote at the end, we decided to reject. We don't know that yet. I just like to write it all together at the end so I can clearly see it. Okay, find the test statistic. Um, and we're gonna find T. We're going to find t, okay? Again, why? Because we were given the sample standard deviation s instead of the population standard deviation sigma. That's all there is to it. You're given the uh, sigma or population standard deviation, you use a z-test, okay? If you're given s or sample standard deviation, you use the t-test. That is all there is to it. So, we're going to do everything same as before, but instead of, and just watch the uh, steps here, stat, test, Instead of t-tests, I'm sorry, instead of, oops, I hit the wrong button. I didn't scroll over enough, sorry. I need to scroll over one more time to get tests. Instead of z-tests, we're going to choose option two for t-test. Once I do that, we just enter our data. I apologize, I didn't already, I still have this from the previous problem. So take, give me a second to enter these numbers. Oops. I'm not good at typing and looking at my, holding my phone and everything at once. I apologize. X bar was 52243. S sub X, that S represents sample standard deviation. It's a good test point. Make sure you look and see, does your calculator say S? Does your problem say S? Okay, that tells you you chose the right test. Sample size here was 20. And again, it was a two-tailed test because that comes from the alternative. And I choose calculate, and it gives me t equals 3.01. Again, it also gives you the, the p-value. Um, I will tell you, if you totally go blank on the test and forget how to find critical values, 
you can still answer the last step of the problem, which I always ask you, do you want to reject or not reject by doing the p-value test. They give you the same answer either way. Um, so just a little way to get as many points as possible if you do go blank on any part of it. So the p-value is here. Keep that in mind. Um, p-value is always under the t-test or the z-test. I'll show you how to find the critical values in a minute. But right now, we were finding the test statistic 3.012. Uh, actually, they just asked for two decimal places, 3.01. Okay. Have that written right here. Now, we were asked to do the critical value method, which means we need to find, using alpha, we need to find our critical values. They define our region of rejection. Then we need to find out if this number falls in a region of rejection. Okay, so I already have my picture drawn. Right, right now we don't know those numbers, but we know there's going to be two critical values because it's a two-tailed test. We know between them is the fail to reject and beyond them is the reject region. Okay, so again, alpha was 0 0.01, very small. I need to divide it by two. 0 0.01 divided by two is the area inside there and the area inside here. So I need to find these critical values. I know I already have them written down, but uh, I will pretend like we don't have them yet because we need to know that exact number that defines that boundary and this exact number that defines that boundary so we can know where our critical value falls. So we are going to go to, remember on the Z test, we went to second bars, inverse norm, because Z is the normal distribution. Now we're going to inverse T because we're doing a T test. We're finding our T critical values, okay? Z is inverse norm, T is inverse T. It wants area to the left. Um, again, the total area is 0 0.01. Area to the left is half of that. I'm just going to put it in my calculator as 0 0.01 divided by 2. It will do the work for me. So 0 0.01 divided by 2. Because half of my uh, alpha, which is my area that defines my region of rejection, half of it is on each side, and I'm just going to find this one critical value right now. So 0 0.01 divided by 2, comma, the mean is still 0, and the standard deviation is still 1. Whoops, what did it not like? Sorry about that, guys. Oh, I'm so sorry. I actually told you wrong. I was just... Uh, I made a little common error there, so stay with me. I'm going to go to inverse T. I do apologize. I'm in such a habit of doing it a certain way, but this is a good time to pause and look at it. I write down, what I type in is area to the left, comma, degrees of freedom. That is a new word. So I went ahead and typed in the 0 0.01 divided by 2. Again, it's a two-tailed test. I have to take my given alpha, divide it by 2 to find the area in each tail. Okay, so I need this area in this tail is 0 0.01 divided by 2. And the area in this tail is 0 0.01 divided by 2. I always find this critical value first if I have 2 because area to the left is the easiest to enter. So I always have to enter my area to the left, comma, my degrees of freedom. What are degrees of freedom? Let's look back up here. Degrees of freedom are n minus 1. So let me write that up here. That is a new concept. So in our problem, n was 20. So our degrees of freedom are 20 minus 1 which is 19. So that is what it wanted me to enter. I got in a hurry and instead of thinking, I just typed what I was used to. I do apologize. So again, inverse T, alpha, or area to the left of whatever value you're trying to find. I'm sorry, it's not alpha, it's area to the left of whatever value you're trying to find, comma, degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is always equal to your sample size in minus one, so 20 minus one was 19. I hit enter, and it gives me my critical value. Um, on this one, they asked for three decimal places, so negative 2.861, that nine tells the zero to become a one, negative 2.861. That is my critical value on the for the left region of rejection. Remember, it's symmetric, so the right's going to be the same number without the negative sign, 2.861 positive. Now, that defines my reject region, my reject region. What I need to know, this is an axis. Where on this axis does my test statistic come from? 
That comes from my sample data. I need to know where it, my sample data tells me I am. 3.01. Well, 3.01 is going to be greater than 2.861. It's going to be somewhere in here. 3.01 is somewhere in here. It doesn't matter exactly where. We just know it's in there, meaning it's in the reject region. Okay? So since, and I, saw, I apologize, I kind of ran out of room down here. Uh, since uh, our test statistic 3.01 is inside the reject region, okay, which was the claim, we reject the null. Or we reject the claim. So I went back up to the top and wrote that because I was running room, out of room at the bottom and I like to see it all together. The null was my claim. I rejected my claim. If I reject my claim, I do not support it. Okay, so there is enough evidence to reject the claim. Okay, there is uh, not enough evidence to support the claim. It says the same thing, depending on what options you're given.